Welcome back to my rants. Now, this time there's a man called the Atheist Voice. Or there's a YouTube channel called the Atheist Voice. This video was made two years ago. has 295,000 views. has a good like to dislike ratio. So, I'm going to watch it. But, I'm going to delete everything on my camera first, so I'll be right back. Anyway this right here, turn the volume way up, well, let's go. Is Anne Frank burning in hell right now? Now, she was Jewish, so yes, she is. I'm sorry, but she is. And the reason being is, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus Christ, everything you did wrong is forgiven. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, everything you've done is not forgiven. We have a perfect God, which means he cannot take any form of sin into heaven with him. He cannot take any form of sin at all. It has to be washed clean. And this is his perfect system for washing our sins clean. He gives us free will to choose whether we want our sins washed clean or not. So believe in Jesus, your sins are washed. Don't, don't. Rotten hell. I'm not, I'm not saying I wish you to rot in hell. I don't wish anyone to rot in hell. I'm just saying you will if you don't believe in Jesus. That's all I'm saying. How about Mahatma Gandhi? Is Fred Phelps in heaven? Because he believes in the divinity of Jesus. Now, Samson, let me tell you the story, biblical story. Now, Samson, right? The man with the long hair. You know, he's big and strong, you know. Well, excuse me. Now, Samson believed in God. God told his mother not to ever let him cut his hair. The Nazarite vow, vow forbade him from drinking alcohol or being in a vineyard, being anywhere near alcohol, essentially, or touching anything dead. And so when he was younger, he walked through a vineyard, which he wasn't supposed to do that. He touched a dead lion, which I think was a skeleton. And later on, he told Delilah the secret to his strength. Delilah cut his hair. And Delilah, I believe, was a heathen. Back then, you were not supposed to intermarry with the heathen people. So Samson made all these wrong choices throughout his life. However, he did make sacrifices to God, which means he did get to heaven. But nowadays, the sacrifice is Jesus. So, if you believe in Jesus, that's your sacrifice. So, you will go to heaven. So, Fred Phelps, if he was a Christian, unfortunately, he is probably in heaven. That doesn't mean he escaped judgment. That just means he's in heaven. Should a killer who genuinely repents be able to go to heaven? Yes. Yes. If I killed 40,000 people and I was disgusted with myself and I said, Lord, I'm never going to do this again, I'm sorry, and I meant that genuinely, I would go to heaven. That would happen. If Hitler repented to Jesus and said, I never want to, I, I will never do this ever again, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again, and he didn't, he'd go to heaven. But he's dead. So he doesn't get any more chances, but I'm just saying. Should a kind-hearted atheist be forced to go burn in hell for all of eternity? Yes, it doesn't matter how kind-hearted you are. All of us are sinners. All of us deserve hell. All of us. And the only way out of it is through Jesus Christ. Because all sins in the eyes of God are equal, equally terrible. All of them. Should they be burning in hell? There's no such thing as a good person on this planet. Everyone is evil. But if you believe in upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. I have answered this already. Your salvation is not based on what you do here on earth. Your salvation is based upon whether you, or not you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Which is why Christians, when they do something good, they're not doing it for reward. 
You don't get anything for doing something good. But that's what God commands you to do. That's what God wants you to do. So if you believe in Jesus, you should follow God. Okay? You should follow what he wants you to do. You don't have to, but uh, I'm going to. I'm just saying. He's given, he's given up his only son to die on the cross for my sins. The least I could do is donate pennies here and there to, you know, charities and donate dollars here and there to the church. That's the least I could do for him. Would you be happy in heaven if someone you loved was in hell? No. However, it's your own personal choice. If your son or daughter were dying, and I hope that never happens, would you just pray for them, or would you take them to a doctor? Like I said earlier, prayers are not always answered in the way you expect them to be or in the way you want them to be. Prayers are answered by God. And if God, God knows all, right? You should trust His opinion and His outlook on things. Because he knows what's going to happen in the future. He knows the timeline of everything. He knows what's going to happen. So maybe your son or daughter has to die or he's going to do something bad or maybe he's going to... You know, God has a reason. Maybe his death is going to help someone. Maybe it's going to inspire someone to like cure cancer. Who knows? There could be anything. Anything can happen. Or maybe it's just his time to go. And that's God's perfect will. And if you say you do both, which one do you think has more of an impact? Well, it depends on God's divine plan. Whose prayers does God answer? Everyone's. He answers everyone's prayer. Sometimes the answer is a complete no. Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes it's different. Sometimes he answers them in differently or in ways you didn't want him to or didn't expect. And if it's ultimately God's will, what happens? Why even bother praying? Really? We're going to go there? You're freaking un if you have cancer right now, what's going to help you more? Drugs or prayer? Both. You should have both. If you don't pray, why is God going to listen to you? Just like, excuse me. Now, there was a man named George Mueller a while ago, right? He was building this orphanage. He prayed to God for the ability to build it. He prayed to God for the materials. Excuse me. He prayed to God for the materials to build it. God save He prayed to God for the materials to build it. He prayed to God for the strength to build it, everything. But once it was finally set up, he didn't have any kids. He did not have any kids come into the school, into the orphanage. Why? He forgot to pray for kids. He forgot to pray for kids to come into the orphanage. So, and the Israelites, whenever the Israelites didn't consult God, something bad would always happen. They didn't consult God about sin in the camp. They didn't pray to God about something. They would not win their battles when they were fighting. You always have to consult God. I just figured he's the one who created the entire universe. You always have to consult him. I figured that was obvious. Let's say you had an amputated limb. Would prayer ever bring it back? No. Why? Because of sin. You've heard stories about... Basically, God put a curse on man to where we have to work the ground and to where we can die and we can be hurt. That is caused by sin. We screwed up, not God. An amputated limb ever growing back? How come there's never a camera around when anything like that happens? How come there are no... I don't believe amputated legs grow back. The reason being is... God does not always answer your prayers in a way you might expect or in a way you might want him to. I've already explained this. You're asking stupid, out-of-context questions. Cameras around when any miracles happen.
Miracles do not happen nowadays because our faith, our belief is by faith. You have to have faith in God. If you don't have faith, then He will not show you miracles. If you do not have faith, He will not allow you to understand the Bible. That's why you ignorant retards do not understand it. Because you do not have faith. You had an exam coming up. What do you think would help you earn a higher score? Prayer or studying for the test? Both. If I didn't pray, God wouldn't be on my side. I'd fail it. If I didn't study, yet had God on my side, I wouldn't know any answers. I'd still fail. It's a combination of both. You have to have both or you're going to screw up. If you prayed for me over YouTube... Because think about it. I have plans for my life, right? I want to, like, let's say I want to be a marine biologist. I want to go to a pristine college when I grow up. And I want to be a marine biologist. And I just want to sit there and do marine biology work all my life. But let's say God has a different plan for me. An even better plan. One that I might not understand now. I might no, not know about now, but in the future it's really going to help me if I consult him first. And imagine if I didn't, okay? I didn't get to become a missionary and travel all across the world exploring places and helping people. Instead, I sat in an office somewhere, you know, twiddling with pencils. Imagine that. All because I didn't consult God. You know, it's always good to consult God because his plan for your life is ultimate. Right now, do you think I would know it somehow? What matters to God more, the quantity of prayers or the quality of the prayers? It doesn't matter. You don't even have to say a prayer. You can just think it in your head and he'll hear it. Like, it doesn't take a fancy prayer and pray for hours. All you have to do is... Is just a plain, simple prayer like, Lord, please help me with the exam. As long as you have faith, he'll help you with the exam. That's all you have to do is just say that. Please help me with the exam, please. That's all it takes. It's not about the quality. It's not about the quantity. It's that you pray is what he cares about. If it's the quantity that matters, how come the most popular team doesn't always win the Super Bowl? And if it's the quality that matters, how come people we really love, people who are close to us, how come they die no matter what we say to God? Now, God doesn't take sides for one thing. Another thing is, because of sin, back in the Garden of Eden, because of sin, mankind can now die. Because we ate from that tree, we can now die. We sin. We have shame, guilt, fear, all kinds of different emotions that we didn't have before. So death is a direct result of sin. So when someone dies, don't blame God, blame sin, because we screwed up. Is it possible that your prayers have no supernatural effect and only serve to make you feel better? Nope. That's bullshittery. I've even seen it in action in my life. When I don't pray about something, everything always goes wrong. But when I screw up, or when someone else screws my life up, when I get in a rut somewhere, uh, I'm feeling down, I pray to God, and he, somehow everything always turns out okay. If I don't pray to God, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper into a rut. I've seen that. It's not always like that 100% of the time, but the majority of the time it's like that. And if that were true, would you ever admit it? Is there anything in your life? I just explained it, so I don't have to admit anything, because there's nothing to admit. Life right now, that makes you doubt God's existence. No. Tell me something that should make me doubt God's existence. One thing. If you did doubt God's existence, how would your life change? Quite frankly, I wouldn't have any boundaries. I could do whatever I wanted. Any, everyone could do whatever they wanted. That's not right. You need boundaries for one thing. Is Jesus white? Why did yes, he was an average Jewish man. Most people believe he was an average Jewish man. 
Speaking on that, he said, oh, why ain't there anyone around when miracles occur in modern day? Well, when Jesus fed 5,000 people and Jesus rose from the dead, 5,000 people saw the resurrected Jesus. A few select handful of people saw him rise from the grave. All these different miracles, all these different people witnessed and they wrote books about it. And who witnessed Muhammad's visions? No one. No one witnessed Muhammad's visions. No one. And when you pray facing toward Mecca, that's a lie. That's, stu that's stupidity. It's If you're a Muslim, I don't mean to insult your religion, but it's there's no premise for it. There's no grounds for the Muslim religion. There's nothing. God is more likely to help someone who's a talented athlete over a starving child overseas. God is not. God helps all people. God gives all people second chances, third chances, fourth chances. And the reason being is life is unfair. Again, everything in this world comes back to sin. How was that door created? It's created by a man that was working, right? He worked to create that door. Why did he have to work to create the door? Because of sin. Everything comes back to sin. I hope you understand that. The reason why this world is so unfair with starving people overseas and a su successful at athlete that sits on his ass eating all day, it's the world is unfair. As soon as Satan came into the world and started tempting people and they started sinning, the world became unfair. Why does God seem to hate Africa? If God does not hate Africa. They have wars, tribal wars, and they have kingpins and all this kind of stupid shit. And instead of building up their country, they fight. So what does that result in? That results in people starving, people dying, all kinds of things. It's stupid. A group of people from, say, Africa came to your community with the intent to convert you to their tribal faith. Would you listen to them and take them seriously? Or would you just dismiss them because they don't believe what you already believe? I might listen to what they had to say, but then I would point out where they're wrong and what, how, what they believe is incorrect. Like if they believe that some kind of magic sun god made the sun rise and fall every day, and they believe that... Uh, the world was once covered completely in lava. I could tell you, hey, if the world was entirely covered in lava, then there would be a layer underground in which it was all just molten rock, right? It was all like lava rock. It was dried magma, cooled magma. A layer all over the earth that would have to be there, but yet it's not. You know, I could rebuke what they're saying. I could argue against them. Does God speak to you personally? Yes, in ways he does. He speaks to me through signs. If God spoke to you and told you to kill your child, would you do it? Yes. If God told me something and I knew 100% that it was from God, I wouldn't care what it was, I'd do it. Yes. Think about it. That's what God told them. That's what God told Abraham to kill his son Isaac. As soon as he was about ready to kill him, an angel stopped him. That was a test of faith in God. Now, of course, God wasn't going to let him kill his son. God wouldn't do that. But if God told him to do it, he'd do it. If God told him to slit his own wrist, he'd do it. If God told you to kill me, would you do it? Yeah. It wouldn't matter if he had a reason. If the ultimate creator of the universe told me to do something, I'd do it. Just like if the ultimate creator of the universe told you to kill me, I'd expect you to do it. Is God always watching over you? I'm yes, constantly watching us. He is constantly watching us. He constantly sees everything we do, even if everything we do in secret. Yes, he is. He knows about everything. He's all-knowing. He knows when I'm taking a shit and how many molecules are in my shit. That's true. He knows all. Why do you 
say to Muslims who believe the Quran is the holy book? Are they? I say, I use arguments like, well, Muhammad, no one witnessed Muhammad having all these visions. You know, no one knows that he truly had all these visions. No one witnessed it. No one spoke about it firsthand. It's all third person and it's just shady. That's all. It doesn't sound right. Um, have you read the Quran? And why? Yes, I've read parts of the Quran. You so easily dismiss their holy book. Because of some of the points I'm making. And then why do you get upset at atheists who dismiss yours? I don't get upset at you. I just think you're be being foolish. And if you want to rot in hell, go ahead. Be my guest. Is acting on one's homosexuality a sin? Is yes, it is. It most certainly is. There, in the new, we go by a New Testament. Christians go by a New Testament. In the New Testament, it says that not only is it an abomination, but you will not enter the kingdom of heaven if you're gay. That's what it says. Be not deceived. So. There's nothing to get there. There's nothing to turn into a metaphor. It's true. What it says is what it says. Be not deceived. Okay? Men who have sex with men will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, and Romans 1, 27. Homosexuality itself is a sin. Yes, it is. Being queer is a sin. You won't get to heaven doing that. Do you believe gays and lesbians should have the right to get legally married? No, I do not, because God invented marriage. Therefore, God sets the rules of marriage. And God says that love is between a man and a woman. Therefore, love is between a man and a woman. Marriage is between a man and a woman. And if God sets those rules, I think you should honor them. Would your church ever marry a gay or lesbian couple? I personally don't go to church. My house is my church because I don't need a pastor telling me that I need to donate or that I need to go every Sunday or I'm going to go to hell. I don't need that because I don't believe that. I believe you can worship on your own terms, okay? I don't need some pastor telling me that I have to be forgiven for my sins by talking to him instead of directly to God because I'm not worthy to talk to God. That's not true. Everyone can talk to God. It doesn't matter who you are. You can always talk to God. If not, and you believe that they should have the right to marry, why do you remain in that church? I don't think they should have the right to marry. This is not a real marriage. Sure, you can have all the same medical benefits and all that good stuff as a married couple, but I don't think you should have the right to literally marry. That's bull. Why would God create people who are gay and then punish them for being gay. The Bible says that people are gay because of the sins of mankind. People are gay, or homosexual as it puts it, because of the sins of mankind. Which means it all comes back to sin. That's what I said. It all comes back to sin. What Child molesters, murderers, adulterers, queers, it all comes back to sin. That's why people are the way they are. It's because of sin. Why do I cuss? It's because of sin. If God is already sending gay people who act on their homosexuality to hell, why do so many Christians feel the need to persecute them here on earth? Why? I think they're wrong. I think they're disgusting. I think they need to stop. I think they can stop. And it's bull. Is God playing hide and seek with all of humanity? God is not playing hide and seek with all humanity. If he revealed himself to us, that would destroy his perfect plan of getting as many sinners off this planet as he can before he destroys Satan. There's a certain set of rules as to how his holiness works. So if he takes, if he just shows shows up and shows us that he's that he's real, if he shows all of humanity that he's real, then he can't take us to heaven. Because we're still sinners. It has to be this sort of anonymity, personal belief thing. 
That would be messing with free will if he made us all believe. And then we would basically be controlled by him. No, we f have free will. That's why we pray. Because everything in life, certain aspects of life are controlled by God. But for the most part, it's free will. So you have to pray. You have to pray to God. Do you believe Jesus is coming back to earth during your lifetime? If you Possibly. Possibly. Now, Revelation talks about it. The prophets wrote about it. Jesus spoke about it. John took a look at it. He told us what he saw in the book of Revelation. And, yeah, I believe Jesus could come back in my lifetime if Hillary Clinton is elected. I can't guarantee that. He could come back in a thousand years. could be 12 million years before he comes back. Who knows? I assume it's within my lifetime, yes. Do. What do you say to all those people who have been saying the same thing for centuries and who are no longer with us? Christianity is not destroyed yet. When Christianity is destroyed and the world is like Sodom and Gomorrah, that's when God's going to destroy it. That's when Jesus is going to come back. It's not quite there yet, but as you can see, it's getting there. Why is the story of Jesus' birth and life so similar to that of mythological beings who lived before his time? Actually, in certain ways, it's not. Honest, let me listen. Do you, do you expand on that? And if you want to hear about those stories, we'll leave a link below. How do you decide which sections of the Bible are literally true and which ones are just metaphorical? Well, I take, Jesus took all the Bible literally. The Bible, when the Bible is metaphorical, it'll tell you it's metaphorical. In other words, Jesus' parables, those are metaphorical. Jesus basically implies that those are metaphorical. If you're a believer, you know what the Bible means, okay? God will reveal to you what the Bible means if you're a true believer. That's why these atheists don't understand and they mock us. Because they don't get it. They're blinded. The, the, fool's, the fool hath said in his heart that there is no God. The fool's heart hath been blinded by sin. So... The Old Testament should be taken literally. However, that's a history book. We don't go by the Old Testament. We go by the New Testament. I've explained. I have to explain this in every video because you use arguments from the Old Testament against us. We don't go by the Old Testament. Get used to it. Thank you. What are the minimum requirements for being a Christian? Believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Anyone who believes upon the Lord Jesus Christ and believes that he saved you and washed you of your sins. Fred Phelps. Pat Robertson? Yep. I think Pat Robertson is a great man, honestly. He says that queers are wrong. I agree with that. He speaks up for what's right. He doesn't sit back and just watch the world turn, go to shit. He stands up for what's right. He, taught, he, he says it to your face. He doesn't care if you're offended. He says it to your face. He tells you the truth to your face, whether you want to hear it or not. I like that. James Dobson, President Obama. Mm -hmm. Do you really believe? I believe President Obama is a Christian last time I checked. And he, he will go to heaven if he's a Christian. He screwed a lot of people over, though. I mean, no one will escape judgment. I will escape judgment. You won't escape judgment. No one will. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to heaven. believe Mary was impregnated without ever having sex? Mm-hmm. I believe that. God could create a planet infinitely bigger than the biggest star in the known universe, which is VV Cephe. I don't know if I pronounced that right. However, that's that star that's millions and billions of times bigger than our sun, which is 40 million times bigger than our planet. God could create a planet infinitely bigger than that star. It's pretty big. He can do whatever he wants. He could touch this planet and it would explode into little tiny fragments. 
He could turn the entire universe, not just the known universe, the entire universe, into a black hole. He can do whatever he wants. Okay, he has free reign of this entire realm. He can do what he wants. But he created everything here and he left it alone. If someone came up to you and said she was pregnant, but she was totally a virgin, would you believe her? Not unless God came to me in a dream or something. I wouldn't believe her, no. Uh, God gave me a surefire sign that that was true. Yeah, I believe it. If God gave me a sign about anything and I knew 100% it was from him, I'd believe it. Why did God have to rape a teenage girl in order to become human? He did not rape a teenage girl. She didn't do anything at all. She was automatically impregnated with Jesus. If you could go back in time to when Jesus was being crucified, would you try to save him, or would you stand back and do nothing since your entire faith depends on him being crucified? It was God's will for him to be per for him to be crucified. Because God loved us so much that he wanted him to be crucified. Now, because that was the only way for God to stay pure, and at the same time, cleanse the sinners and make them pure so I couldn't interfere with that I cannot interfere with God's plan probably even if I tried to travel back in time and I press the button it probably wouldn't work okay what would it take to change your mind about God's existence um, dying dying and not going to heaven that's what it would take dying and not going to heaven or hell that's what it would take Even when all the evidence seems to point in the other direction. Actually, the evidence that I've examined, including embryonic recapitulation being bull crap, um, macroevolution, microevolution, uh, punctuated equilibrium, which is a fallacy, uh, the idea that natural processes have occurred at the same rate all throughout history. Uh, let's see, what else? The idea that the tictalic used to be amphibious, which is, it never was, it's extinct now, and that the sea moria, that it was actually part whale, all this stupid crap, well the sea moria was actually the first amphibian, supposedly the first amphibian, that was that other animal was part whale, supposedly, they, and what amazes me is an evolutionist can look at a skeleton and be so quick to jump to conclusions. You know, they've looked at a skeleton and said, oh, that's the first ancestor of this and that. Like, that's the first ancestor of the first amphibian. And then they get the complete skeleton and it's a modern day animal. Freaking stupid. What is something your pastor has said in church that you totally disagree with? Like I said, I don't go to church anymore. I have free, I have free worship. Your pastor about it, or did you just let it slide? Why are there so many Christian denominations? Now, the reason being is all people have different interpretations of the Bible, and when pe different people have different interpretations of the Bible, that creates different denominations. And I don't, I don't necessarily fully agree with any one of those denominations, so I'm not a denomination. But if I had to pick one, I'd pick Baptists because they don't believe in queers. And are the people who are in those different denominations bad Christians? No, they're not bad. They're just not necessarily believing right, especially the Catholics. The Catholics believe that Mary was divine and that Mary was holy. Mary was not holy. The only person that was ever holy was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He was the only one that was ever holy. Are they wrong? Which denomination is right, or? No denomination is necessarily right. It's how you interpret the Bible that matters. Which group of denominations is right? Who or what do you think is responsible for natural disasters like earthquakes or tsunamis? Earth's natural processes can sometimes be overtaken by God, but for the most part, 
God lets them run on their own. Natural disasters. Sometimes I'm sure they can be caused by Satan. But, like I said, natural disasters, disease, war, famine, all kinds of things, it's all because of the sins of mankind. It all comes back to sin. Can you pause the video right now and tell me what the Ten Commandments are? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain, thou shalt not cover thy, covet thy neighbor. I think those are the important ones. Okay, there's five. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor. Thou shalt not give false testimony against thy neighbor. The rest of them are just ones about owning property and stuff like that. It's not super important. Those six, the first six or seven, are very important. The rest of them are not so important. And if you know them, and good for you if you do, why do so many Christians believe that the first four of them belong on government property and in the classrooms? Murdering, stealing, lying. Uh, there it is, lying. Given false testimony against thy neighbor? You don't think that those are wrong things? If I kill someone and I steal from them and I lie to them and then I give false testimony about them in court, you don't think all that shit's wrong? You don't think that's wrong? Well, I guess it's okay then. I'm going to go, after this video then, I'm going to go kill four people, steal a TV and a washing machine, and then I'm going to go plea not guilty. I'm going to say that I was at a crime scene and that I saw some guy kill someone. And then I'm going to lie to someone. I'm going to say, oh, I, I killed 45 people when in fact I only killed four people. Because all that's okay, right? It's all okay. Or I could lie about, not, about killing everyone, about killing those four people. I could say I didn't kill anyone. I could say that. That's okay, right? It's all okay. That shouldn't be taught in a classroom because you can kill anyone you want, right? God damn it. <laughs> you can't be serious, you fucking retard. You can't be that. Ser you can't be serious. Get out of the way, bud. Get out of the get, 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 get. Would you feel comfortable saying the Pledge of Allegiance in class every day if the words were one nation under no God? indivisible with liberty and justice for all. No, instead I'd say one nation under God. If you want to say one nation under no God, I don't care. You can say that. Do you think it's just a coincidence that different religions are popular in different parts of the world? Do you believe... Now, it depends on what part of the world it is. Now, in India, they believe that elephants are divine and you can't hurt them. And that you kill deformed babies, which is kind of what atheism is in a way. They believe in natural selection and that only the strong survive. And some of them take that to the extreme and say, well, we should kill off the weak. So that, that way the strong survive, speeding up the process of natural selection, which is bullshit. If that if you were born in Saudi Arabia, you would be a Muslim rather than a Christian. Quite possible, but that doesn't mean I have the right religion. That doesn't mean I have the right religion. Is it possible that religion has less to do with what's true and more to do with the circumstances of where and when you were born? No, that's not possible. It has to do with what you believe. It doesn't matter what your parents say. It doesn't matter what your teacher says. It doesn't matter where you're born. It doesn't matter where you live. It matters what you believe. If you believe that that a uh, giant can of bleach rules the world or something, you can believe that. I don't care. That's your personal belief. If you want to identify as a piece of wood, I don't care. You can call yourself a piece of wood, but that's not what you are. Just like I can call myself a woman, that's not what I am. I'm a man. I can have a a piece of wood, I can cut my balls off, right? And I can sew a piece of wood, 
I can sew my sack around a piece of wood, right? That doesn't mean I'm a piece of wood, okay? Do you believe childbirth is an example of a miracle? Is that no, childbirth. Childbirth is just an everyday thing that's necessary to keep God's people going. I mean, Hitler was once a miracle baby. No, like I just said. And if childbirth is a miracle, how come that miracle happens thousands and thousands of times every week? I don't think it's a miracle. Okay? Thank you. My name is Hemant Mehta, and I write at FriendlyAtheist.com. Leave a comment below, and we'll be sure to check it out. I answered every one of them, okay? Short arguments against God's existence. You know so let's listen. Purdue Polytechnic Columbus. We're connected to one. Had to, had to skip the There's ad. no evidence. God doesn't stop the evil in the world. In fact, if you read the Bible, God committed plenty of it. God never committed any evil. The Old Testament, like I said, is a history book. Also, that was not evil. That was in his divine plan. It was in his divine plan to slaughter the heathen. Because they were going against God to begin with. The ultimate punishment for sin is death. Okay? So if God wanted to kill me, I'm a Christian. He probably wouldn't do that, but he can do that. If he wanted to kill you, he wanted to kill anyone. He can do that. He can do what he wants. Okay? Another thing... There is evidence. There might not be evidence for God Himself, but there are, there is evidence for things that are in the Bible, like the flood, all kinds of things. Okay, archaeological evidence, like the Hittites, and even just things like where it says like the Earth is round. The word sphere wasn't invent wasn't invented back then, so it says that the Earth is round. It says that things are seen and made up of things of which are unseen, which was. And it said that thousands of years before we discovered atoms and molecules and cells. All kinds of things, okay? Drowning just about everything alive? Not a sign of love. Well, you know what else is not a sign of love toward God? Is when you kill people and you screw and you do everything against His commandments. You know? Do everything against his commandments and I expect everything in your life to be okay. The opening lines of the Bible are factually wrong. Why should we believe the rest of it? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. They're not factually wrong. The Big Bang Theory is a load of shit. Just because the universe... All, everything in the universe is speeding away from each other. Doesn't mean that the Big Bang is a correct theory. It just means that dark matter is causing everything to push away. That doesn't mean that a ball of energy exploded out of nowhere and then here we are. That doesn't mean that. And two comets swirled around each other and hit each other and then hit Earth and then there's life. Yep. Last time I checked, explosions destroyed life. They didn't create life. Prayer has never fixed anything physically impossible. Why won't God heal amputees? Why won't God heal amputees? Well, let's see here. The sin of mankind. If I have to explain this how many more times? One more time. If I have to explain this one more time, I'm going to lose it. Because of the, the what? Oh, the sins of mankind. Hmm. There are thousands of gods you don't believe in. What makes yours any different? Wait. Because there's evidence for the Bible. Okay? There's evidence for the Bible. Where you're born essentially determines what you believe. Why should the truth be based on geography? The truth is not based on geography. The truth... Is there's no such thing as my truth, your truth. The truth is the truth, okay? And whatever you believe, that's fine. But the truth is the truth. You believe what you want to believe. It's not based on geography. Are you atheist just because your parents are atheists? No, there's plenty of atheists with Christian parents. There's plenty of Christians with atheist parents. 
there's plenty of Christians that are surrounded by atheists. There's plenty of atheists that are surrounded by Christians. It's personal belief. It's what you believe to be right. Who created God? And how does your... No one created God. Created God is. God always has been. Okay, God has always existed. God does exist. He has always existed. Okay, he is the ultimate source of all life. Answer to that make any sense? Yes, it does. He's always existed. How does that not make any sense? He is eternally existed. Pediatric cancer. Unconditioned. Number nine is just pediatric cancer. Really? <laughs> really? Pediatric cancer. Really? That's your argument. Pediatric cancer. God damn it. Number nine. Pediatric, can pediatric cancer. Oh, God. You, you guys are making my day. Hey, what's wrong? Anyway, you guys are making my day, I tell you. Pediatric cancer. Now, you didn't make anything clear. Just like the feminists, I can take this and run with it. Because you didn't make your point clear. So, I'm going to say that you're asking me if there is a God, then why does pa pediatric cancer exist? Because of the sins of mankind. The serpent tempted Adam and Eve. That put the whole world into sin. Okay? The whole world fell into sin. So now we have cancer, we have diseases, war, famine, all kinds of things. I've already explained this. Conditional love shouldn't come with a list of conditions. And Unconditional love does not come with a list of conditions. God loves the people who are in hell right now. Because they're imperfect, they have to be punished for their sins. They died without believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean God doesn't love you. A God can be angry with you too. That doesn't mean he doesn't love you. I can be you can be angry with your parents, but that don't mean you don't love them, right? Every single supposed miracle gets debunked eventually. Like I said, I don't believe miracles occur in modern day. That's because God forces you to believe by faith. Somehow the Ten Commandments left off don't rape people. That was not prominent back then, actually. Rape was not prominent back then. And slavery's not okay. Well, let's see here. Back then, slavery was quite common. So, Jesus knew that we would get to that point pretty soon. Okay? So, even in the New Testament, Jesus says, Slaves, be, be kind and obedient to your masters. Masters, be kind, and, be kind to your slaves. So, owning slaves is okay, biblically. But, as long as you treat them with kindness, respect, and all that good stuff, you don't torture them, you don't abuse them, you give them breaks, things like that. As long as you treat them very fairly, then you'll be alright. And if you're a slave, as long as you're kind and obedient to your master, you'll be fine. No one said the Christian life is easy to fare. The movies and music that honor God are just awful. The Okay. 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 Let me see here. Let me see. Give me a second. Now, I found one song so far that I listen to quite often. I want you guys to uh, listen to this. Not to ruin it, but of course the audio is going to be real crappy because this webcam is, you know, a piece of crap. But let's continue. You can look this up. It's called I Can Only Imagine. Just look it up on YouTube. It's a song. Obviously. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when you face before me I can only imagine 
listen to that. Now I realize I'm going to get a copyright strike for this. Quite frankly, for the sake of the video, I don't care. I don't make videos off my... I don't make money off my videos. Okay? I'm just proving the point that Christian songs are not terrible. Okay? I don't know if this is a better version or a worse version. I'll have to listen to it in a couple minutes. I'll be right back. This will do.
just thought that might be a better picture for you while you listen to the song. But there's nothing wrong with that music. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay? Display. Visible and the non existent look very much alike. Um, air and being non existent look very much alike. So, air is invisible. You see the air around me? Do you see it? Is it visible? I can feel it entering my lungs, but I can't see it. Hmm. Nope, I can't see it. Uh, let's see here. Can you actually see beams of light traveling through the universe? Like, let's think about it. Here's a star over here, okay? Here's a planet. Can I actually see it straight out in front of me as it travels from the star to the planet? Can I see it? No. But I can look directly at the star and know that's traveling toward me. Um... Hmm. Here's a good one. Can you actually see space? In other words, if there were no stars in the sky, could you actually see space? I know there's no atoms or molecules within space, virtually, but could you see space? Serious question, think about it. Can you see com completely empty space? No, but you know it's there waiting to be filled up by something. No hide and seek game lasts this long. Well, when you're playing hide and seek, Hide and seek, as you call it, with a God that has existed for eternity and can live for eternity. Hide and seek does tend to be pretty, pretty long game. Science explains so much of what we used to attribute to a God. Mostly, what we used to attribute to a God would be things that the Greeks and the Romans would attribute to a God. Cultures and religions like that, not our religion. The more we learn, the less reason we have to believe in God. It's not true. The more we learn, the more reason we have to believe in God. If you try to explain your religious mythology to someone who had never heard it before, you would sound crazy. Seriously, try explaining communion wafers to someone who's never heard of Catholicism. If I don't believe in Catholicism. In fact, I personally believe that Catholicism is ridiculous. God didn't exist. The world would look exactly the same way it does now. Actually, it wouldn't. You want to know why? It, let's say you poof God and heaven out of existence right now. Satan is given free roam of everything. Okay? Think about it. Satan is given free roam of the entire planet. You know what happens then? We all rot in hell. For eternity. Every last one of us. If God existed, he would smite me right now. No, he wouldn't, smart ass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. It just, it, piss, it pisses me off when you make snide remarks about God. It, it, it rubs me the wrong way. You're attacking me. I'm defending. You understand? Now, now, God wouldn't smite you, okay? God gives you free will to do what you want until you die. When you die, that's your judgment day. Your judgment day doesn't occur as soon as you do something wrong, okay? God loves, and loves us enough to give us time to repent. He would smite me right now. No, he wouldn't. Yeah, you're good because God loves you. He loves you a lot more than I do. Got any more? 
numerous short arguments against God's existence? No, I don't. I got arguments for God's existence. I'm tired of debating for the day. I'm going to go do something else. Um, I don't know. I'm, I might debate a little bit more this weekend, but for now, I've had enough of you people. All right. You guys have rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, goodbye.